action. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm very glad to see you at my place. <laughs> so I have some some questions. Uh, most of them are not from me. Most of them are from uh, guys uh, who ask to these questions at my website. So I uh, told them that, that I'll do an interview with you, and they uh, left comments. Mm -hmm. So uh, at first I want I want to ask you how is Moscow for you in in general I mean not only clubs or parties or so <laughs> but but Moscow is a is a place for a living being mm -hmm. and so I really like it I was I've been here for um, three weeks and I was supposed to go back in uh, on June sixteenth but I just mm -hmm. extended my ticket to. Uh -huh. July the 9th in the night, which is the very latest I, I can go back, so I, I take every possible day. Um, and you know, I've been to many countries and I, I, I've already made good friends here, and I, I really like that. You know, it's my it's my birthday on July 7th, so oh, I, you have birthday, yeah. So yes, I, just, I, decided, I decided I want to have my my birthday in Moscow, so I think it's a, a big compliment for me to say, you know, on my birthday. In, Moscow, not um, you know London, where I've got you know so many good friends, or you know New York or somewhere. So you know, I, I definitely really like the city. So we'll prepare some interesting party. Yeah. 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 Uh, tell about Moscow clubs and parties and uh, how is it in uh, if to compare it with uh, I don't know with New York with London with mm -hmm. Rio <laughs> and so on. Um, well, first, thank you for taking me to some nice clubs um, because you invited me. So uh, without that, I wouldn't I wouldn't get to see some. But the clubs are. The music is a bit different. It's in in London. It has more R and B, and in New York, it has more uh, hip hop, more rap. So the music is is more dancey, um, and the biggest difference is is obviously the girls uh, are much more attractive. I went to um, a sports bar the other day and watched uh, the, mm -hmm. the the Champions final, League. Yeah. yeah, and there were more beautiful girls in the sports bar <laughs> than in like the top London clubs and the top New York clubs. So, <laughs> It's um you know that's that's really something you know I st when I, when we go to the club and I stay awake until ten a.m. or eleven a.m. The only thing that keeps me awake is the is the beautiful girls you know I lose my energy and then I see a beautiful girl like, oh you know it gives me the energy to you know t to carry on I don't need any any Red Bull to, to stay awake you know so we're that's, that's we're the biggest little, difference we're a little bit uh, used to beauty of Russian yes. Russian women so we. we, we, we we can, if we want to go to sleep, no beautiful girl can <laughs> stop us from from the seats. I think if you if you go to London for a few weeks and then come back, you'll you'll be ah. you'll appreciate it again. Okay. But yeah, the Russian guys are very lucky. I know. So and uh, my next question, um, you know some guys from Russian seduction community. What can you tell about uh, level of Russian players and uh, so about uh, how good are they or how interesting are they or how... Um, yeah, of course, in, uh, if to compare it with the other countries mm -hmm. and... Well, the, the, the guys I've met are... Um seem like nice guys and cool guys and it doesn't that doesn't sound like you know something too strange but mm -hmm. the american guys are very weird you know you meet someone like uh ross jeffries and you know and even neil strauss they're, they're not they're not cool guys you know they seem mm -hmm. they seem a bit strange so that's that's the you know the first thing um i don't have any experience yet of you know um gaming with them or mm -hmm. you know doing this kind of thing we've just been hanging out I hope we'll fix it this week <laughs> it <would be> cool, <laughs> yeah 
but um, my impression is is definitely positive and I met a few guys already in the club that um, that have learnt some pick up and are, and are pretty good and you know some good naturals mm -hmm. um, so I think there's there's definitely some guys with with very good game in, in Moscow okay and uh, uh, I saw your a game last uh, Thursday at night with the girl at, at Vanilla Ninja Club and uh, what did you do to uh, make her so friendly to you? What, did you do something special? He, uh, she, uh, as I noticed, she hugged you in a few minutes after you talked with, with her uh, was it s some technique or routine or so on? Or, or is that I had my I, routine script? Yeah, 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 I, I know, I read it I know that, that my question is, is special special for yeah, guys yeah. who listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah uh, no, I didn't. I didn't use any routine. Mm -hmm. I, my, I think, uh, I think I probably demonstrated some qualities mm -hmm. in the first minute. So. I'm not too serious, I'm very playful and... And how exactly did you do it? Maybe a few examples? Um, if it, if within, it, a, within a few minutes yeah. I said um, I said she's my new girlfriend and uh -huh. I said to her friend you know is she a good girl, is my girlfriend a good girl and stuff like that and you know then my friend came and I said I'll meet my um, my fiance and I kept making this, this um, playful connection between us and I think when you're when you're playful with a girl you can you can escalate that sure. you can um, hug her and touch her and stuff um, more quickly and I think just generally because I was attracted to her, I was I was doing things you know right mm -hmm. um, you know I wasn't I was actually working quite hard in my head to, you know to be um, to be on form and engaging, but in terms of specific lines, um, nothing special. It's all about the the vibe that she got. You know, I I have done some other stuff in Moscow where I've used some lines. I'm like, oh, that was cool, you know. But mm -hmm. this was this was just about um, creating comfort through not being serious, from being playful, and mixing that with some honesty. Yeah. And also, as I noticed in in the clubs, uh, you uh, don't like to do cold approaches. You make an strong eye, eye contact with girl. You smile to her, and if she answers, uh, you uh, begin to begin conversation. Mm -hmm. And what do you do if? Very beautiful girl d doesn't answer <laughs> to, to your eye contact and to your unverbal signals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that happened a few times. I think with this particular girl, I don't think she gave me any signs. She was just next to me at the bar, uh -huh. um, and I said something about, um, I was like, "You're drinking whiskey." I was like, Is uh -huh. it, "You know, um, that's a man's drink." I was like, "Only joking." You know, like this. Um, something like that and in in another I think we went to oh, it was Friday I went to another place and um, there was a girl I really liked and she was in a very difficult position with her friends there it I don't was know. in Imperia man this was Koshka I don't remember this um, okay but anyway I was, I was there there was a really pretty girl and I was like mm -hmm. I want to talk to her mm -hmm. but I can't you know it's mm -hmm. very difficult for me to do anything non-verbally so I just had to do a traditional cold approach. Mm -hmm. You know, she had a, a cocktail with um, like a blueberry, the small mm -hmm. berry in it, and um, it had one in the top, a blueberry. And I said, "Oh, there's a fly in your drink," <laughs> like this. And she went, "It's not a fly. Look, I'm going to get it away from me." <laughs> I said, "Oh, you should get another." You know, so just playful thing using nice. the the situation and. Um, the only reason I remember is because I was with a, a guy that asked me what was your opener. Otherwise, because I always use something uh, situational, I don't, sure. I don't normally remember what I say. Uh -huh. And they asked me, oh, I don't know, I don't know. 
and uh, so I had to do a couple of cold approaches. Um, so I, I can do it if I if I need to. And do you use uh, a direct game like uh, I like you? Let's go dream for I like you. Let's no, I like to be. Um, no, you know, bad boy style and so. so. No, I think it's. Mm -hmm. um, you don't like it, or it's an effect. I think it's it? primitive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not very subtle. It's mm -hmm. you know, it it's not. You know, he sells it as uh, your confident guy. So you go, you say, "Yeah, yeah, you're very beautiful. I want you, and I take you now." Very charged. <laughs> Excellent, but it's not. Um, it's not the smoothest way to do it. You said with this girl that I was touching her very quickly, but I didn't tell her that I think she's beautiful mm -hmm. or that I like mm -hmm. nothing like that verbally. So I'm uh, physically direct, but verbally not direct, and I think that's the, the best way to go. Um, yeah, it makes it sound also. Yeah, a guy that is very serious in your process, you're very beautiful mm -hmm. and I want to fuck you, come with me now. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, a lot of girls will be scared by it, and it's not, um, it's not any more manly. I don't think the results are any better. I've tried... Um, I tried direct game and it generally puts you in a bad position because then she knows you like her right away and she doesn't have to work, she just, you know, has to decide, you know, yes or no. And so it's not it's not really um a direction is not a choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not artistic, it's not uh it's not real mm -hmm. it's not real game. Anyone can do that. You go up to a girl say, Oh, you're really beautiful, you know, come for a drink and what, maybe 1 in 10, maybe 5 in 10, they say yes, but uh, if you can open in a way that you can open 9 out of 10 girls, mm -hmm. then you you have then the chance within the pickup to persuade them to, to do something, and that's when you use your, your skills, so um, I think it's a, I think, I won't go so far as to say stupid, but I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's the best method. Sure. I think try it out, maybe it works for you, maybe you like it, but I don't think it's the best method. Mm. Uh -huh. um, um, what uh, did you discover about uh, uh, something, maybe something special about Russian girls, Russian women, what makes game easier or harder or both, what is special of them? Of Moscow girls. I guess the you know there's a, a few differences. The difference in London is if you've got a girl that is, she doesn't even need to be attractive. Just, you know, just a little bit pretty. You know, maybe she's quite ugly, but she has boobs sticking out, mm -hmm. or you know something very simple like that. She um, she thinks she's a princess. Mm -hmm. And I think in Moscow, you you might think the girls are a bitchy or princess, but way less than in. Uh, you know, in uh, London or other places when the girl is average and she thinks she's she's so good. Um, I've had Why is it so? I think just because they know that beauty is is a commodity here. It's not a rare thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, it's like in England they love when the when the sun comes, but in Brazil they're like, yeah, it's another sunny day. So what? You know, it's mm -hmm. so in Moscow it's like, yeah, there's a beautiful girl there. So yeah, what? There's another so beautiful girl there. Yeah. There's another one there. So. You know, it's no big deal. But in London, you're like, oh my god, the beautiful girl. I won't see another one for three months. You know, come, please, please. You know, and she's like, oh, you know, I'm the only one. You know, like this. So it's 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 a different dynamic. But aside from that, I think Moscow girls they like more uh, honesty. I don't think stupid uh, gimmicks would work so well. I think a more honest approach is good. But I didn't need to. I didn't need to change my game too much. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's pretty much the same. Okay. So, uh, some questions from my readers, from my clients and, sub and subscribers. Um, one guy wrote uh, that uh, lately uh, he uh, separated with uh, his girlfriend and she said that uh, there wasn't enough adrenaline with you mm -hmm. and there wasn't not enough emotions. Uh, how is better to uh, solve this problem? What adrenaline do girls need? Uh, and what uh, do girls uh, 
mean when they say you know, such things? I, I think a girl is strongly attracted when she never has you 100%. Either you've got um, you know, a passion, um, which could be anything from business to you know, something artistic, mm -hmm. um, and you've got your friends, you've got your social life, and she, she can't pin you down and make you always available. Also, I think you should remain attractive to other women and she should see when she's out with you that, you know, you talk to the waitress and you don't do too much, but she sees that you could have the waitress or you could, you know, you have female friends that are attracted to you. And by, you know, by having the situation where she never feels like she totally has you, it keeps her, um, keeps her attraction high. But you know, many things, just, just be surprising, you know, don't get her a gift for, you know, three months and get her something, and then get her something mm -hmm. really special, plan, um, you know, plan surprises, just say, be ready at 10 o'clock and wear, you know, wear something sporty, and then you take her some, you know, some place um, to do some activity, mm -hmm. you know, try and um, mix things up and be exciting, um, you know, girls like surprises, girls like their emotions, you know, going up and down, and a lot of the techniques that you learn for game, a lot of the characteristics you, you use in the first hour with a girl, you need to continue those into the relationship, you know, the, whether it's being cocky, funny, or uh, whatever it is, then, you know, there, but there's but, obviously many things for a relationship. But uh, for many guys it's a problem because uh, to make, uh, to show all these interesting things in the relationships they must uh, to change their lifestyle from a dull job home job home to something special and uh, uh, I think that it's the root of all the problems and all the success in seduction yeah. and in the game uh, do you agree with yeah I mean in, in the past I would say you know let's say I met a girl when I was you know 24 years old I'm, I say okay I live with my mother I um, I you know, I work from home, I don't have any friends, I've had one girlfriend, and I have no hobbies or interests, I just play PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Come come into my life. She'd be like, no, thank <laughs> you, you know? But I changed, you know, now I have lots of, um, lots of surprising skills, you know? So maybe we go to a Chinese restaurant, and I can speak some Chinese with the, and she's like what and she knew me for three months she never knew I can speak Chinese or we go and you know I could do some dancing or I can cook something or I can you know I've been to lots of places to travel and stuff so it's it's important to think not what game do I need to get to get this girl but when I think of the girl that I want what what do I need to be able to offer her with my whole mm -hmm. life so yeah, you do. If you're not good enough, but it needs to but change. it takes years. It does, but <laughs> even even just doing you know three hours a week doing some interesting classes, you have lots to talk about, new skills and something interesting and different about you. You know, if you're if you're working in uh, finance and you just read finance books all the time, it just makes you more you know stuck in mm -hmm. this area. So mm -hmm. you you have to be broad and. You know, do many things. Mm -hmm. uh, this part is not quick. Yeah. The next question from uh, my website. Uh, what, what do you think? What uh, qualities, uh, external, internal, social, and so on, uh, are necessary for uh, girl, for primary girlfriend, for constant girlfriend, and for potential wife, for future mm -hmm. wife? What do, you what do you think is necessary for this girl? I, I want a girl that, I mean I can speak for myself, uh -huh. um, I want a girl that is uh, quite innocent but has the potential to be sexy and I want a girl that... So you need very young girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, true, not, not illegal but quite young. <laughs> and. Um, I want a girl that I can trust and the way I test this is when I meet her I try and sleep with her as fast as possible and if a girl would sleep with me and she doesn't even know my name and things like that then it's tough to trust her, 
you know, if I went away on holiday and I know she goes out at the weekends and maybe she has a few drinks, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit risky but with this kind of But then it's a conflict with the <coughs> results that you want as a player and uh, uh, with uh, wishes to find uh, a life partner. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting, when I was in London uh, with my last girlfriend, I met two girls at the same time, one on Monday, one on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and the girl I'm, I met on Monday, I tried for five hours, I tried everything to, to kiss her, and at the end of the night, I finally kissed her for like, mm -hmm. three seconds, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, that girl's good, and then on Wednesday, I met another girl who I really liked, but she slept with me, and I had sex with her, and I was disappointed with her that uh, she was so easy. Interesting. <coughs> um, and the first one became my girlfriend. Okay. Next questions. Uh, is your... I didn't answer that one properly, but it's a very big subject. I see, I see, but you said about, this. about a special thing that, that's free. Um, Uh, okay, uh, the, the questions about the business and I'll, I'll do them at the, at the end. Uh, is it true uh, that every girl or almost every girl is ready to go on open relationships and to uh, agree uh, that you meet with other girls from time to time? And uh, uh, other girls who are who are ready for it are spoiled and abnormal, and uh, do you have such experience of relationships? And uh, can you tell about this? I think that you can you can meet a girl and she can uh, be closer to one type. You know, she might be uh, bisexual, or she might not, or she might be you know, very open or she might be very uh, old-fashioned and you can meet girls of this type but you have to remember if you, you know, if you look at when uh, someone got caught in, uh, in the war in Korea and they brainwashed them mm -hmm. and they can make an American, you know, want to fight for Korea or, you know, say his country is shit and stuff like this just from um, brainwashing them, mm -hmm. that it's possible to take anyone and you know make them do what you want so or you know you can take a, a, a good girl and make her bad or you can take a girl that's not bisexual make her bisexual you can take a girl that thinks something like you know going to the strip club with you is disgusting or filming a movie having sex is mm -hmm. disgusting and then they do it a few months later so you can change any girl to to be anything for for me um, for me, I, I prefer when I'm in a relationship and I, I really like the girl to, to be monogamous. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's personal choice and I'm still, you know... And I how long does it continue when, when you're monogamous? Because I think that you get bored any girl, like even, even, I don't know, even Angelina Jolie, or, uh, they, they have a... A guy who was tired with her beauty and That's what they say. Any girl, I think, and it's just a question of maybe a year or two or mm -hmm. six months or so. It's, it's something I, I it's struggle biological. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, and I wonder if it's something we should try and control. Um, my, my personal problem is that anytime I've had a girl and I sleep with another girl, then I don't respect my girlfriend as much. Uh -huh. So there's some there's some issue that I have uh, that mm -hmm. makes it tough for me to do this. So whether it's the case that I need to find a way to make uh, a monogamous relationship work, or whether it's a way that I find some relationship where we bring other girls for free terms, or she lets me sleep with other girls, um, I'm not sure. But it's something that you know I'm. I'm 30 years old and I think, you know, maybe by 35 or something I, I'll um, settle down. I do want to have kids as well, which is another mm -hmm. complication, you know. So, mm -hmm. I, it's something I think about, it's, um, it's, 
you know, I, I look at role models and I've got some role models of happy relationships mm -hmm. that are monogamous. Um, they're a bit different because they're, they may be less sexually experienced. You know, mm -hmm. I don't find many monogamous relationships with guys that have slept with, you know, mm -hmm. 300 women or something, mm -hmm. and then you can just stay with one. But, I see. you know, I'm experimenting, we'll see. And uh, uh, in in these situations, in open relationships, the, uh, sometimes there is a game from the side of the girl when when she uh, said that it's okay for you to sleep with uh, to seduce another girl, but uh, then she uh, becomes sad. She's crying mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, what's the well, why does she do so? Why is she say something and they say that it was wrong and it was bad? I think she wants to make you happy. Mm -hmm. you know? So she's, she knows that you want to fuck another girl. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, it's okay, baby. You but know? then she, she, she feels okay. Yeah, she's like, I love you, baby, so you can do it. And then when you actually do it, and the idea that you've you know, been... Uh, naked, lying in bed, having sex mm -hmm. with this other woman, looking into her eyes and stuff, it just makes her sick. So it's, it's, a, it's a conflict and it's, um, it's natural. I, I, I don't like the idea of my girlfriend having sex with another guy. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a natural human thing. Um, maybe she can get used to it, maybe you find a girl that doesn't mind. Um, it would be very nice to find a girl that can totally love you and not cheat on you. And be totally fine with any girl that you slept with. Yeah. Uh, do you have any model uh, of uh, levels of development uh, for the seducer, of steps uh, of development of the seducer, maybe uh, some? theoretical uh, levels of it. Can you mm, let tell them? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, you start out and you can't have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Then you can have a conversation, it gets longer and longer. Mm -hmm. Then you can get to the point where you get a number. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get to the point where you actually can get on a date. Mm -hmm. And then you learn how to go for the kiss. And then mm -hmm. you learn how to do everything faster and better and with better girls. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's kind of a a progression. So, but sometimes it's uh, easier to get, uh, I don't know, to get to go for sex and for relationships and so on, but um, I think it's, it's not so linear, linear, I don't know how this works, linear, yeah. linear model. Uh, I, I found it pretty yeah. linear, yeah, yeah. because Generally, you can't have sex with a girl if you're so bad that you can't even get any numbers. And generally, you can't have sex if you can't kiss a girl. Mm -hmm. And generally, you can't have a relationship if you can't have sex with her. Sure. So, I, in my progression, I did it sure. all in order. And I was mm -hmm. bad, 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 and then learn, and then mm -hmm. bad, 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 and then learn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the first few times I got in a relationship, I got dumped. And now I'm pretty good at relationships. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, and uh, uh, do you uh, divide girls in some types, or as you said earlier, you can uh, uh, teach any girl in any special way? <laughs> uh, do you pray as select them? Or? Um, I, I'm drawn to you similar kinds of girls if i look at my ex-girlfriends they generally don't uh they don't wear too much makeup they don't mm -hmm. uh they don't dye their hair they don't have loads of accessories mm -hmm. they don't have um they don't act like a princess mm -hmm. you know they've got like and i i think it means that they've got in more inner confidence mm -hmm. um so I'm, these are the kind of girls that i'm attracted mm -hmm. to like a you know a natural beauty, she doesn't have to do make too much effort, mm -hmm. and um, you know she's got some inner confidence from from something else, and uh, of course I go, I sometimes go for other girls, but 
I think from talking to so many women, I can kind of just look at them and I, I know what, what they're going to be like. Mm. Uh, the next interesting question, because it's situational. Uh, if uh, the girl says that you are very good, uh, you are very nice and your future wife will be very happy, but after these words, uh, this girl uh, disappeared. Uh, what's the problem with the guy and what to do in this situation? <laughs> uh, maybe, he's, he, maybe he's a bit boring. Maybe he's, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe he's too nice. Um, normally if a girl seems to like you but runs away, it's because you didn't, you didn't escalate, you, mm -hmm. you didn't do something where you meant to take the lead. Um, mm -hmm. It's not good to have a girl say, you know, you're a nice guy. It's much better if she says, you know, stop it, you're so bad, and you know, all of this mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, what is the, uh, the minimum uh, number of actions to seduce girl? What's the... Interesting. What, to kiss her? Or to and then it's only to kiss and then it's, uh, seduction is over. <laughs> <laughs> The question is uh, how to seduce girls with uh, a minimal усилия, uh, with minimal uh, enforcement, minimal effort. Oh, minimal efforts, yeah, with minimal efforts. And what's uh, the minimum number of actions you must do to seduce you? Four. <laughs> I don't Four. know. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, the, the easiest thing is to be in a very noisy nightclub like where uh -huh. we were in. Yeah and you know the music's pumping everyone's kind of dressed sexy the girls have had some drinks mm -hmm. and uh, it's a it's a sexual environment so it's not it's not the daytime mm -hmm. and you can achieve a lot just by uh, she notices you um, you have some kind of non-verbal connection you're on the same wavelength mm -hmm. you share something and then you're and then you escalate Meaning, you know, you you walk towards her, mm -hmm. you take her, you dance with her. Mm -hmm. You don't need to say anything. You kiss her. Mm -hmm. um, and then say, let's go. Five things. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. It, it, it's very very simple in steps, but it requires um, a lot of social intelligence to understand the situation mm -hmm. and to behave correctly for that girl in that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what is the things, what are the things that are opposite to seduction? Uh, how to calibrate uh, uh, your own actions and if you notice that some of these things that are opposite to seduction are just to don't do them. What is the opposite to seduction? Do you know this? Mm -hmm. um, nervousness, uh, being being dominated by her, mm -hmm. uh, her kind of leading the interaction, setting the frames. You know, however you might describe it. Uh, not being, not being, not being an attractive man. Being, um, you know, displaying weakness, talking about. You know all your all your problems and bad things, things you don't like. Um, hesitating, not not making the moves mm -hmm. when you want not to, when you know you should. Know, you know, right. Right. Time frame. Yeah. Being weak in the social situation, so she introduces to the friends, and you're kind of, you know, um, in the background. So many many things. <laughs> There's lots you can do wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we try, try some of those to we start. this maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, seduction and pickup, is it for you more business or more lifestyle? Or uh, it's, I, it was question from Max. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's the worst question. I, I, um, I go out and talk to women and I don't think about techniques or how many approaches I need to do or to come up with a new product or something. Mm -hmm. For me it's uh, because I want to meet women and I, I enjoy it. And when it comes to 
the business, I think of that in the daytime. You know, it's just a separate, a separate area. But my my reason to get involved in the beginning was because of the, um, the passion for. Excuse me, I'll interrupt you. So you, so you never take go for a date and uh, talk with her about some business project because they just in your head and. But but you but you can show that you have an interest in life through it. You can have an interest in state about your business through it. But don't you use it in, in seduction? I don't. I don't talk about myself. Yeah, really. No, I mean that girl I met. She doesn't know anything about me. Uh -huh. But she not that girl, but any, any. They no, don't know. They never know really anything about me. I'm talking about them, about the environment, uh -huh. and. Um, that's it. I don't, I don't really like talking about myself. So you make so, the conversation really easy for them and it's very light and it's playful. So. They feel connected mm -hmm. uh, and it's playful. So it's mm -hmm. playful and connected and then what happens is after, I don't know, maybe after an hour or, or two, um, they become curious. They're like, actually I don't know anything about you. And they ask me a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. And it's very powerful then because she wants to know the answer, and then the answer is good. It's interesting as well, and, and uh, she would appreciate. You answer that to them directly. You don't play with the oh, I do so some of magic <laughs> and so. I think I only play with them when they ask me because they feel they should, not because they really want to know. Mm -hmm. If a girl asks mm -hmm. me, so, you know, tell me, I'm really interested. I'm not going to play with that because she actually. I see. I see. If, if she's like, so, yeah. um, what do you do? And you know, she's just asking. If it's like an interview, then you play. If it's like a serious question, yes. Then, yeah. So. Yeah. And um, it, it's much more powerful that you reveal cool stuff later on mm -hmm. um, than, than in the beginning. And I, I, could, I could probably show off a lot, but I don't, you know, I don't like to. I like to. The other thing is, I don't like the girl to want me too much unless I really like her. So. Um, I can sleep with a girl and she doesn't know anything about me and then she's not crying that I don't see her again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope not, I don't think so. <laughs> um, Чего? У меня вопросы. Uh, да, я могу. Ты можешь по-английски сказать, я не могу перевести. Лучше перевози. Окей. Алекс, have a question, I'll translate. Uh, okay. uh, как он чувствует себя, как девушка отказывает? Uh, how do you feel if the girl refused to if, if she doesn't want you so do you have all these situations or you always uh, well since I've, since I've been here I, I had one girl uh, reject me in the in the club and it was when I um, I approached her and was trying to pick her up in Russian Mm -hmm. My friend said, "Don't do that. It's sleazy." Afterwards, mm -hmm. he says, "You know, you just sound stupid, and mm -hmm. you know, don't do it." So I, I have that excuse for why it didn't work. If I ever have a situation where, um, where I have that happen, I, I normally, in my head, think it's her fault. You know, so mm -hmm. it, it maybe sounds cocky, but it's a nice way to think about it. That, you know, I'm a good guy, I'm a pro I'm, you know, we would have a lovely conversation, a nice date, mm -hmm. you know, good sex, whatever it might be, and you've, you're, you fucked up, because you're, you don't understand, you don't get it, mm -hmm. so, you know, that's your right to do that, um, that's fine, but you're, you missed a big opportunity, and yeah. you, you're going to end up with some worse guy, you know, it's as if I came to you with a bag of money, and you say, oh, no, no, thank you, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, the, the next question is about your book. Uh, so you publish it in Russian? Yeah? Maybe. When? I had a meeting. meeting. Yeah. I had a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, she said she would make a, mm -hmm. a proposal, but I didn't get the email yet. So you know, fingers crossed that uh, mm -hmm. the, the book happens in Russia, and then I have an excuse to come back again, which is always good. And uh, one more business question: How did you? get to the mass media the first time, to the television or to magazines, uh, what is necessary to attract the uh, attention of mass media? I think it's... What is necessary to do? To yeah. I, I think if you have a company that makes you know, tables, it's tough to get in the newspaper, mm -hmm. uh, but with this kind of industry, it's, it's, 
it's a lot easier. It's like you know you're teaching seduction. And, but um, but sometimes uh, in my experience, I I heard that some chief editors maybe they they say that well we will never talk about pickuppers and mm -hmm. so on and it's it's polarized. Yes. Uh, People. You, you need to find the right angle. I mean, the you know certain media will be okay with pickup, and certain one the ones that aren't, then you have a female trainer, and then you do the female mm -hmm. uh, dating coach because then it can't be sleazy because it's a girl teaching it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you release a book, it's mainstream, so you can get any um, any media once you you know you release a book. So there's there's lots of ways, but PR is not a, it's an art, not a science. You know, mm -hmm. there's no. There's no guaranteed results. Sometimes we've got a big TV thing, and then the website has no traffic. You know, and, it's, and then sometimes you have a small uh, mm -hmm. thing that takes five minutes, and there's you know, everyone comes and visits. So it's, it's, uh, it's like an art more. Yeah. Like, a, like a, uh, a gambling. <laughs> yeah, you come so I put one thousand dollars in PR, and then I, I make one thousand two hundred dollars back. You say, you know, it's like roulette. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, uh, what what a uh, question uh, you always want to receive at your interviews, but never nobody asked you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the questions are always different, you know. So I'm, I actually like interviews and Q and A's on boot camps and things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's my it's my uh, favorite part because it's always different. It makes me think, but. Um, I can't think of any any special question that I'm like. Why didn't they ask me that? No, I think I think the questions are generally good and original. And like these ones, I don't think I've been asked any of them before. I I was really uh, maybe it's you it should, the good ones. It, no, no, no. It but maybe it's it's all the questions that uh, that I have on my on my website. I I, I didn't pick the good ones, and I was really surprised about. Uh, yeah. It's not like what opener should Good use. guys are reading my website and my mail yeah. list. <laughs> really yeah, clever, yeah. clever and intelligent. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's very pleasant for me. The worst it's one is, what are your five tips? <laughs> you know, it's like if you have a newspaper, it's like, what are your top five tips? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. That's the worst. Or what's, what's an opener you can use on the mm -hmm. beach? Yeah, yeah sure. This kind of shit that you can just look on. Uh, oh, one. One question uh, from from one of my one of my clients. Uh, uh, his game is on uh, the spe special type of girls or of their external qualities and. Uh, young beauty with special body parameters and and he has very um, he's a rich guy also but he has very um, uh, tough competition on this special type of girls and and w w what can you uh, advise what can you suggest for a game when it's very tough competition from uh, very Reach the guys with money and with uh, so on. What what is what's maybe the best strategy in in this in this I, case? I mean, when when I'm in London, we normally mm -hmm. we normally pick up girls in a in a team mm -hmm. like a, a wolf pack, mm -hmm. you know. So we have um, we have me who I think is very. Um, seductive and playful and mm -hmm. then my friend who's very sociable and funny mm -hmm, mm -hmm, he's incredible mm -hmm. you know funny guy the funniest mm -hmm. guy and then the guy that is very um, high status and rich mm, it's great and great idea I, I, yeah I like it. yeah and we can do things like you know I can take the girl first or maybe my friend who's very sociable and funny takes him. And basically, if they spend the night 
hanging out with us, mm -hmm. then they don't want to go out with anyone else because you know the rich guy can give them a nice dinner and the drinks in the club and the after party in the beautiful house. And my friend Alex is like the funniest guy, so they laugh all night. And then with me, they've got like flirting and sexual tension, mm -hmm. and so it, it just gives them a, a, a really nice experience. So I think you can use your um, your team, and you can't be too selfish. You know, everyone will get laid, but you mm -hmm. can. If you're the highest status guy and you're obviously the you know the boss, then you should get the the first pick of, of the girls. But because everyone gets laid more, um, they will be happy to be you know part of the team. And if a guy only has money, but he's he's probably boring and all of this other stuff, he won't be able to compete. Mm -hmm. I see. And if you can meet someone like uh, you know one of the top guys in the clubs, the club promoter, or you know someone like this. And you just make friends with them. You say anytime, you know, come for after party and mm -hmm. things like that. You know, there's people that have access to lots of beautiful girls uh, already, and they would welcome. You know, uh, you say, have a dinner at my house or come for drinks before the club at my house, something mm -hmm. like this. Uh, if you have a house next to the club and you're rich, then you should be getting laid every night, and it should only be a, a matter of time to find the the young one with the crazy body or, or whatever it is. Okay. Thanks. Есть такие девушки, у которых, в принципе, все есть. У них и счастье в личной жизни, и в И в плане, там, я не знаю, миссии, дела, все отлично. И... Business, their... То есть у них отлично все, они полностью самодостаточны и... Их нельзя зацепить за какие-то такие поверхностные вещи, типа страхов и какой-то там нужды, да? С ними как что? Не самооценка. И бывают моменты, когда они не ведутся, к примеру, да? Бывает, что все отлично и появилось, а бывает наоборот, вот с ними что, что как. And uh, sometimes it's okay with them, and sometimes uh, they object. And so what to do with with girls who are who are okay in every area of their life? They don't need you. So you need to offer yeah. them something yeah. that... Um, what to offer them? Yeah, you have to offer them something that they... that would make their life better. So whether it's, you know, deep conversations or that beautiful connection mm -hmm. or, you know, the funny element, the humor, the, the way to kind of relax and, you know, after work or whatever it is mm -hmm. they've got going on. Everyone, you know, she doesn't want to be single. She's going to be with someone. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can find out what you can ask a girl, you know, about you know her ex boyfriends, and then that's what she wants probably mm -hmm. again. That's what she's attracted to. You can ask her about you know the things, um, the things she really values, or mm -hmm. just see what works. But this this should be the kind of girl that we will we will want rather than a girl that is you know fucked up and mm -hmm. we can manipulate and stuff. You know. I see. Как он начал э, не преподавать, а заниматься, как он тем попал, мотив какой был, как uh -huh. вот что такое произошло, после чего все это началось. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, many years ago, I, I read Ross Jeffries on the internet, but mm -hmm. I thought it was bullshit, so I never, I never tried it. And then um, years later, I was in. You never, we never tried to examine hypnosis in seduction. I've tried. It's, later, it's funny. <laughs> but Ericsson is here, and Ross Jeffries yeah, sure, is, sure. is here. You know, so Ericsson is. I is, don't. Uh, I don't like to use it because. Because uh, when you use it, uh, then sometimes girl begin, if she's 
uh, Hypnobel, she, she begins to go after you. Yes, <laughs> like a zombie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's, but, uh, but it's true. Yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't need it. It's a bit too sure, much. Sure, it's, it's like using it's, a, a yeah. tank to mm -hmm. shoot a, a bird or something. No, it's not mm -hmm. necessary. Um, but I, I was then in uh, Starbucks and they had a mm -hmm. boot camp. Tyler mm -hmm. Dernan was doing a boot camp. Oh, Tyler Dernan. Yeah. So I, just by luck, I, I was there and um, I was like, "What's this?" And he told me, blah blah blah. So mm -hmm. that's how I found out. It was quite strange. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Tyler? I didn't ask you about him. Tyler is, he has very good theory, mm -hmm. uh, he's worked on himself a lot, he's improved himself a lot, mm -hmm. and he has, I respect what he has done, you know, in, in pickup, but he's weird. <laughs> mm, you're like all American guys. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a strange guy, very strange guy. And they create a bit of a, um, a cult mm -hmm. around RSD, it's not, uh, mm -hmm. it's not an open an open thing, you know, they wouldn't, he wouldn't do an interview, he wouldn't talk to anyone mm -hmm. if he came to Russia, I don't think, he's very, like, I, I saw, I saw his, uh, the Eastern, like, guy, I don't remember how his, how his uh, name, Papa? yeah, yeah, he was in Russia, and, and yeah, he's also closed, closed guy. Well, he's, he's useless, but, I mean, at least Tyler has some talent, mm -hmm. but I think Papa is useless. I wasn't impressed at all. I like Love Chop. Love Chop was nice mm. guy. Mm. Sin has mm. very good theory knowledge. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't hate them all. Did you hear? Sure. Did you? Oh, da. Okay. On, on, просто говорил. Did you? I говорил. Да. Это правда, что он там у Артеги какие-то материалы спер? Нет. Я спрашиваю. That's all, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was Thanks, guys. interesting. Thank you for the questions. Yeah. Thank you. Спасибо за вопрос. Ничего, про Мину, ну, ты рассказывай. Так он рассказывал. Рассказывал уже.